one of the concepts probably many people are familiar with is photosynthesis, and you've done a lot of work in that area. Talk to me about what you've been discovering in relation to photosynthesis. Yeah, so photosynthesis is just a magical process. So all of the energy that we consume on Earth comes from the sun. What I want to understand is how you move energy from one place to another efficiently without losing information, without losing energy. And it turns out that bacteria and plants have been working on this problem for 2.4 billion years. And they've gotten really good at it. Because if you can grow just a little bit faster than your neighbor, you'll take over the world and you'll look outside your window and everything will be green. And in a short version, that's kind of the history of our planet. And so we look at some of the most ancient photosynthetic complexes in bugs that are kind of like the Model T of the photosynthetic world. The way these plants work is totally different than the way we build our own technologies. We use something like silicon to both absorb the light and split the charge. That's what our solar cells are. Um, Biology does something different. It uses large antenna complexes to absorb the light, and then it transfers that energy to a material that can split the charge, the reaction center. It's also a protein complex. So we go in with our spectroscopy, and we try to dissect the dynamics. And what we found is that in moving this energy around, it's doing exactly the opposite of what I would have thought, which is ensure that energy doesn't get lost as heat. Keep it away from the vibrations and the molecules. Make sure that you're not losing that energy and dissipating it. Um, instead, the dissipation actually drives the system. Um, and that perhaps was not unexpected, but the way it couples to the vibrations to drive it is very deterministic. It's, it's planned out, if you will, in the structure of the protein. And the idea in the past was that the energy sits there and then there's sort of random motions that cause it to hop between different chromophores and it kind of hops through the system. You can almost think about it as sort of hopping from lily pad to lily pad to lily pad. That's not quite the right approach. When something gets excited, waves then move out through the system, which affects all the nearby chromophores and those vibrations actually help transport the energy. And it's that relationship between the initial excitation, the subsequent sort of ripples going out through the complex, uh, and the electronic coupling between the different things that allows you to move okay. energy can, in a can, very different way. So I'm going to keep pausing you because yeah. I, I, there's such big concepts and it's really easy to nod and go on. But I, but I want to make sure that, that I'm, I'm really tracking with it. So it used to think the energy would be hopping, for lack of a better word, inside the plants. And, and you're discovering that it actually comes in waves. And that, that's exactly that, right. And hopping, it turns out, is the only option when you have a random environment surrounding you. That's what we okay. do in most of the systems that we build to transport energy for FRAT, for biology. It turns out there's something a little different happening in these evolved complexes. Okay. That they are exploiting coherent vibrations in order to transport the energy which can be more efficient and faster than the traditional models that we thought were describing the system. So the energy doesn't just bounce around randomly looking like a path, like a ball bouncing, bouncing down on one of those boards with, with pegs, right? Instead, it kind of spreads out like a wave and explores all the paths at once using quantum mechanics. And tiny protein vibrations kind of act like a rhythm section keeping the wave in sync so it doesn't fall apart as it steers the energy down the fastest route to where that then gets turned into fuel. It's kind of like cheating at that game, like Plinko, by quietly using quantum physics to make sure it wins every time. Does that sound about right? It, it, again, it's like watching a car go by and seeing it go fast. You know it's quick, but exactly why uh, will allow you to reproduce those dynamics? And it turns out it's this very delicate relationship between the vibrations and the electronic states inside the complex, something that we would typically ignore. Explain that a different way, the vibration between these states. Tell so, me a different way. On that. All, type, all matter, all molecules are made up of different nuclei that are bonded together with electrons. Uh, and when you see something in the visible, so like the green of your plant outside, that's an electronic excitation. That's rearranging the electrons in the molecule. When you think about heat, that's the nuclei moving. 
So when you excite the electrons, typically that energy is lost as heat that just absorbs. It's the color in your clothing, the color in the plant, everything that you see that's colored uh, works that way. And so you lose the energy from the electrons when it couples to the nuclei. Uh, and so if you want to be efficient, the basic idea is try to minimize that coupling. Don't let the energy leak out into random nuclear motion of the, mole of the atoms in the molecule. Um, it turns out if that motion isn't random, then it can promote more efficient energy transfer. Uh, and that's okay. what these complexes have learned how to do. So we, of course, know that electrons couple to molecular motions, but we've never really found a good way to use that productively to promote energy transfer. Biology taught us that it's possible, and we're trying to learn exactly how to copy those ideas.